Let's all stand up and let's open our Bibles. Let's open our Bibles in the book of Hebrews. Chapter 4. Hebrews chapter 4 will be uh, just two, two portions. Hebrews 4 verse 2 and Hebrews 4 verse 12 to 13. It's there in the screen. Okay. Hebrews 4 verse 2. For this good news that God has prepared this verse has been announced to us just as it was to them. But it did them no good because they didn't share the faith of those who listened to God. Verse 12. For the word of God is alive and powerful, it is sharper than the sharpest two-edged sword, cutting between soul and spirit, between joint and marrow. It exposes our innermost thoughts and desires. Nothing in all creation is hidden from God. Everything is taken and exposed before His eyes, and He is the one to whom we are accountable. All right. Two portions. Our topic this morning is about how to respond to the word. How to respond to the preaching of the word. And our text says that the gospel was preached to those people in the past. We'll mention that in a little while. But they did not benefit from the preaching of the good, the good news because they did not believe. They lacked faith. They did not join with others to believe. They did not. So they, they did not profit from it. And so also, from verse 12 to 13, we begin to read about the power of the Word of God. The character and the power of the Word of God. Because of the power of the Word of God, we need to respond differently. Not like maybe ordinary books. The Bible is God's Word. So let's pray. Hallelujah. Father in heaven, we are still in, in the act of learning how to be a disciple and follower of Jesus. We want to learn word having. We want to be attached to the word. We want our hearts to be filled up to the overflowing of the word of God. We want to fill our minds with the word of God. Oh Lord, help us. And help us to respond profitably during the times of preaching of the word or sharing of the word of God. Whether in small group or in corporate group like this. I pray God that we will speak to your people today. And that they will learn experientially how to say yes to the word of God. How to take the sign of God on whatever issue. Because Lord, your word is perfect. Your word is infallible. Your word is the revelation of your mind. Bless this congregation this morning, Lord, in Jesus' name. Everyone say amen. Amen. Comprehension and understanding. And then also number three in, in uh, 
subject of human ethics, there must also be a growing confidence in what God is saying. Because sometimes understanding is clear. But people are not trustful. They are not trusting God. They must be able to uh, have confidence in the, in the Word of God. God's Word is final. God's Word is alive. And they must accept the Word of God. And then number four, the preaching in, in all those three steps should end up with change. There must be transformation among the people of God. You must be a doer of the Word. Amen. If you are not a doer of the Word, it says you deceive yourself. So let's do the Word. Let's allow the Word to transform us. With that, I'd like you to look at the text again. Let me read to you the different versions of Hebrews chapter 4 verse 2. And I want to point out several things, two major things. Let me read it from different versions. NIV says of Hebrews 4 verse 2. It says, For we also have had the gospel preached to us just as they did. But the message they heard was of no value to them because those who heard did not combine it with faith. How many times does it happen in the church? The people listen to the word of God being preached, but it did not profit them. They go home empty and and uh, discouraged <laughs> or they, they go home without without a take out of whatever God, the word of God has given them. Because they did not mix it with faith. They did not combine listening with faith. You, you must understand that now. When you listen and the reading and the preaching of the word of God, you must have faith in your heart. Trust the word. Amen? Hallelujah. And another translation, ESV, English the third version. It says, for good news came to us, just as to them. But the message they heard did not benefit them, because they were not united by faith with those who listened. Did not benefit them, because they did not unite with those who have heard and believed and obeyed the word of God. Now the background of that scenario in Hebrews 4 is found in the book of Numbers. When Moses selected 12 elders from each tribe, one from each tribe, and sent them as wives into the promised land. The, the mission was to go to the promised land, go over the Canaan, roam around, explore it, and give us a report about the land. And so the Bible tells us that they went into the promised land, they explored it, and they went back, 12 of them, and gave their reports. Two of them, Joshua and Caleb, said, Let's go to lands. We will conquer the land. The land is given to us. It is really a land of milk and honey. It flows with milk and honey. Look, we, we brought some, some uh, product of the land. Two people were carrying the grapes. You know, the one, one, one bunch of grapes. If you buy grapes today, like three kilos, you can put it in a, in a bag of paper, right? But those grapes were so large that two people were carrying just one, one bunch of grapes. I can imagine the grapes are as big as the coconut fruit. Uh, you like that, you know? Big, big grapes. And then you get one and you you, you bite it and you will all, almost get drowned because of the juices of the, the grapes. <laughs> they are imagining. Those are really huge. It is a land of pomegranates. It, it's a land of fig trees. It's a land of abundance. So that was the report. They said, let's go march. Then the ten spies, ten of oh, the majority of the spies gave also the same report, but they added, yeah, it is really a good land growing in milk and honey, but there are giants there. The sons of Anon lives there, and they will swallow 
and grasshoppers in the lines and no, hindi ka nang enter the land, they will all die there. That's their main, that's their report. And, and, and so they said, why did God bring us, why did God bring us to this place only to die? It's better for us to go back to Egypt. But listen, they did not believe the good news. The good news is, according to Caleb and, and Joshua, the good news is, the land is ours. The giants there are nothing. Why? Because God is with us and God is for us. We can conquer them. Those giants are good for us. It was a word of faith. But they did not believe. So it says there, one of the uh, optional translation is that they did not profit from from uh, the good news that was preached because they did not unite or join themselves with those who heard and believed and obeyed. In fact, if you search the scripture, God was willing to destroy all of them except Moses and maybe Joshua and Gilead, who destroyed all of them and started a new batch of people to enter the promised land. They were so murmuring they are grumblers and they murmur a lot. They did not pass God. And so the, uh, it says here uh, in a New English translation For we had good news proclaimed to us just as they did, but the message they heard did them no good since they did not join in with those who heard it in faith. So there are two possible translations or interpretations. Let me read from the message. But the message they heard did not benefit them because it was not mixed with faith. Open parenthesis, with the leaning of the entire personality of God in absolute trust and confidence in His power, wisdom, and goodness. Close parenthesis. By those who heard it, neither were they united in faith with the ones who heard and believed. So, two possible uh, translations or interpretations, both are, are profitable for us if we accept both. They are not contradictory. But it gives you an idea that in the preaching of the Word of God, we must trust God in what He said. Yes? But we must also have a unity of trust in God. The Bhagavad congregation will be lived together. They listen together, they believe together, they, they uh, celebrate together, and they are transformed together. Is that not good? So, in responding to God's word, let's look at what Hebrews 4, 12 to 13 says about the power, the value, and the capacity of the word of God. Let's enumerate them. The power of the Word of God uh, gives us gives us a clue on how to respond to the Word of God. It says that God's Word, first of all, is alive. The Word of God is alive. Amen. It is living. It is alive. It is alive because it comes from the living God. It is alive life-giving. One translation says, the Word of God is life-giving. How many of you have experienced the Word of God inspiring you to be revived? You begin to be alive again. The Word from the world destroys and kills your spirit. But when you read the Word of God, you are inspired by the Word of God, you are revived again. The Word of God is so powerful in this life-giving. Number two, the Word of God is that word active means effective. It is effective because it is full of power. The translation says the word of God is full of power. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. The word of God has the power to be performed. It has the power to come to pass. It has the power of fulfillment. When God speaks, it 
that it shall be, be so. When God speaks, it is like it is already done. You remember the creation story? God will just say, let there be. And there was a light. Every time word comes out of the mouth of God, it has the power of being fulfilled. So it is alive, it is active, and number three, it is piercing. It has the power to pierce and penetrate. It says in verse 12, it is sharper than any pledged sword, piercing to the division of soul and of spirit, of joints and marrows. Hallelujah. It, it has the power to pierce. It has the power to penetrate deeply. Amen. Some, some literature just informed the mind. But the word of God reaches out to the heart. And not just to the heart like shallow and surface. It digs deep. The word of God digs deep. That is the reason why you are a of the word of God. The scriptures is in your heart. Hallelujah. It's your defense. It is your strength. It is your security. If you have the word of God penetrating in your heart. It is piercing. Now, in Matthew chapter 13, the word of God was compared to a seed by the Lord Jesus himself. He said that the, the sower went out to sow some seed. Some seed fell on wayside. Some, some fell on rocky soil. Some fell on, uh, some on, on thorny soil and some on good ground. Now, have you observed that the seed, when it begins to sprout? Of course, the roots comes out. And then the cotyledons begins to be open, right? The cotyledons, which provides the nutrition for the seed, for the new plant, will begin to, to appear and come out. But the roots begins to dig deep. The roots that does not, you know, the space of the roots is going down, down, down. The, the future of that seed is on its root. Jesus said, some fell on the, on the rocky soil. These are people who hear the word of God. They receive it with joy. They are so happy receiving the word of God. But then persecution comes and all kinds of testing comes. They fall away. Because according to Jesus, there's not enough moist, moisture. And there's not enough soil there. It's rock. And so the roots are prevented from uh, reaching the, 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 the water of life that can make it grow. In the same way in your, in your life, the word of God is piercing you and the, the roots begins to come down. But when you hear the word of God, but harden your heart. It says there in Hebrews 4, you read it in verse 7. It says in verse 7, it says, Today, when you hear his voice, do not harden your heart. That was the, the problem of those Israelites who heard the report of Joshua and Gilead. The good news that they cannot, they can now own Canaan land. They did not believe. They are stubborn. They did not mix it with faith. They hardened their heart. That's why God said today, if you hear his voice, do not harden your heart. Why? Because the seed needs soft so that it can penetrate there. Let's go to the next. The Word of God is not only alive, active, and piercing, but number four, the Word of God is discerning. It has more power than just providing you information, but the Word of God begins to take information from you. Yes. 
yes to the word of God. If you deny the word of God, it has no effect on you. But if you just say yes, Lord, to all the discernments of God. Hallelujah. And the word of God is discerning in such a way as it is. Let me use this word. The word of God is judicial. Because the word of God evaluates your life. Okay? The word of God evaluates your life. It has power to judge right from wrong. Amen? Amen? In fact, you know the, the, the word faith. Faith is our response. You must believe when God's word comes to you, you must have faith. You mix it with faith. What is faith? Several times for the last 40 years. Several 
several times, hindi mo mong come to the end and deserve it and say, Pastor, ang nang ginihap nito yan na nakatunguyan mo, hindi ginigo mo. Can I tell you something? I don't know this anymore for just one person. Alright? So, if you feel that you are being exposed or you are being uh, stamped naked, it's not me, it's the Lord because He wants to give you a healing experience. When the doctor wants to remove your appendicitis because it's already about to erupt, he has to open you up. He has to expose what is there inside and remove it. Amen? Uh, there are also people who brought their friends to church. And for the first time, they sit down together and while they are listening to the sermon, the, the first time that begins to help is, is her friend and saying, Did you tell the pastor about the problem? No, I don't have, I, I don't know your problem. And your friend does not have to tell me the problem. That, that is cheating. Alright? I don't have to know your problem. It's not me who wants to know your problem. It's the Lord who wants who already knows your problem and he wants to help you. If you feel you are being exposed, that is because God wants to help you. Hindi ka mo kung sila yung ang naigo, kumpukin siya kapuman. Hindi siya ako pala niya kursa. Hindi ikaw mo kumpro ibiyas pa. Now the word of God is discerning and exposing and lastly, according to verse 13, the word of God is accounting. It has power to bring everyone into account. Accounting power of the word of God. The word of God reveals the Lord God to whom we are all accountable. Let me read this again. No creature is hidden from his sight, but all are naked and exposed to the eyes of him, to whom we must give account. In other words, the word of God brings me along with him, the judge of all the earth, to whom we will all give an account of our life. This is not an ordinary book. This is not an ordinary experience. When the word of God is being preached among us, Ladies and gentlemen, eternity is affected because eternity will take you and bring you into account. God will be there. So, because of this, because of this power of the Word of God, when it is being preached, what should be your response? Paul wrote to the Thessalonians in 1 Thessalonians. They were Christians. He said, I know, beloved, that God loves you. Because when we preach the word of God to you, the word of God came to you not in word only, not in words only, but also with power and the Holy Spirit, with much conviction. And then also that you saw how we live among you. The word of God came to you with power. Amen. With the Holy Spirit. The word of God, of God came to you. When we preach the word of God to you, it came to you with much conviction. And then with much proof about how we live. Our life was an illustration of the Word of God. And so Paul told them that when we came to you to preach the Word, you did not receive it as words from men, but you receive it as word from God. That's it. it actually is. Paul was preaching to the people of Thessalonica, and Paul said, what we were preaching is really the Word of God. It's not that Word. It's the Word of God. And it's, it was good that you receive it as word of God, which it actually is, and it is effective in your life. How they told us how that you receive the word of God, and your faith has become an example to others, you turn to God from idols to serve the living and true God. Word of God is very effective in that way. Why? Because people are responding right. So we want you to respond right every time we gather, every time that is preaching the word. Whether it's in your small group that you are sharing the word of God, have these following steps. Here are the following steps that we can profit from the word of God. How do we 
respond to the word of God. When it is being preached corporately, and when it is preached or read by you individually, when you read the word of God, here, here, here are the steps. How do we respond to the word of God, the preaching of the word of God? Number one, fear.
Lord is the beginning. You fear the Lord. Here's the advantage. If you have to fear the Lord, you sit down there, you, you are focusing your eyes or, or your mind and your heart on the Lord. You are not doing uh, hunky panky inside the church or while you are reading or, or studying the Word of God. You have the, the heart that trembles at the Word of God. The Lord will supply you with wisdom and with understanding if that is in your heart. Hallelujah. Praise God. Okay. So that's the first rule. Let me read to you also James chapter 4, verse 7 and 8, and then verse 10. It says, So humble yourself before God. Hallelujah. Of course. If you have the fear of the Lord, you will have reverence to the Lord. You respect the Lord. Amen. Then you humble yourself before God. You resist the devil and he will flee from you. Come close to God and God will come close to you. Wash your hands, you sinners. Purify your hearts for your loyalty is divided between God and the world. Verse 10. Humble yourselves before the Lord and he will lift you up in honor. Now, you go to the church, you sit down, you praise the Lord, and now the word of God is being preached. How do you respond? As I said, fear the Lord. When you fear the Lord, you humble yourself before Him, and you don't run away from Him. You draw close to Him. How can you hear clearly if you are running away from Him? Humble yourself before Him. Draw close to Him and He will draw close to you. Hallelujah. And then you humble yourself before Him and He will lift you up. So that's number one. Fear the Lord. That is our first response to God. Number two. Number two. Focus on being fed. Make your hearing 
Hallelujah. Lord, because you are interacting with me. Hallelujah. You say amen because you are free. Amen? You can say hallelujah because you are so blessed. Hallelujah. I read, I read an article that says, if you are a member of the church, these are 50 ways you can respond to the preaching of your pastor. So I, I read it. Now, not 50 ways, 50 phrases that you can shout during the service while the pastor is preaching. You can say, preach Lord, brother, hallelujah. Say it again, brother. They are encouraging the pastor. I, 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 I did not give importance to it because it gets very sensitive. But I want you to interact, not because of me, but because you want to be fair. Hallelujah. Number three. Number three. Responding to God's word. While there is preaching or the word of God is being read, number three. Find out God's rima for you. Find out God's rima for you. I a little explanation again, the invention about Congress and Rema, the other times. It refers to the Word of God. But Rema is a specific message from God for a certain circumstance in your life, for, for this time and for this place. Rema is the, the, you know, it's like going to a boutique, alright? You have a specific uh, prescription. You don't buy all the digamot in the botica. There's a specific thing for you. In the same way, the Word of God has a specific thing for you. And it's God who determines what that specific thing is. It is His Word for you. It, is, it becomes alive for you. I attend service and I cut that. I, I wash. I find out what's Rimon for me, Lord. This is my day home. Hallelujah. When I go home, this is the one that will prevail in my, my heart and in my thoughts. This is the Rimon of God for me in my condition, in my situation. And then, therefore, it does not mean that you disregard all the other parts of the sermon that you heard. It just simply means that the Word of God is relevant to you because it touches the area of your life where God is really speaking to you. Find out God's rima for you. Amen? Uh, 2 Timothy chapter 2 verse 7. Paul was talking to Timothy. He said, uh, Timothy, as you, as you uh, read these words, as you listen to my words to you, reflect he said, reflect on what I am saying. Maybe as a pastor, I should say to you, reflect on what I am saying. Because as you reflect, Paul said to Timothy, the Lord will give you insight to what I am saying. The Lord is good in giving insight. You don't produce your own insight. The Lord will give you insight. That insight is just, just for you. It's the accurate word of the Lord for you. In a service like this, you know, it's, it will help you nothing if you just take home the outline of the sermon. No, take home the, the ring of the Lord for you. Hallelujah. The insight that He is giving you. God said, the Lord Himself will give you insight to these things. Isaiah 55, 11. The Lord said, also will my word be. Which will go forth from my mouth. It will not return to me empty, but it will accomplish whatever I will, and it will prosper in the task for which I send it. Here, here is what you need to understand about the word of God being rich. When the word of God is being rich, it comes from the Lord through a humble preacher, and it is rich to you. And and then Eventually, that word being preached to you can go back to God. But God says, my word will not return to me empty. But it shall accomplish the purpose for which I said it. There is always a purpose. 
every time the word of God is said. Amen. Amen. That's why we discover the purpose. The main purpose for you is different from the purpose. That's purpose for others. The same word is being read. But you have a rhythm. Yes, a rhythm. All of us are benefited by the teaching of the word. Hallelujah. That's the reason why we always give an altar call. As much as possible, we want to give time so that you can respond to an altar call. You can come to the front. Make your own session with the Lord. Settle it with God. Hallelujah. He has spoken to you about something in your life. You come to the front and settle it with God. We are praying together. We are a community of praying people. Hallelujah. We are people of the Lord. God has spoken to us. So, find out God's prima for you. Let's go to number four. Number four. Face it up. Face it up. Meaning, deal with it. Don't run away from it. Deal with it. Let me read to you again. Acts chapter 2, verse 37. When Peter was finished preaching, he was preaching for, for quite a while, according to Acts 2, when the Pentecost came to the church. Then, then verse 37 says, Peter's words pierced their hearts, and they said to him and to the other apostles, Brothers, what should we do? Those are good audience. I like that audience. This audience are open to God. They saw the signs and the powers of God. They saw the work of the Holy Spirit there. They felt it was really God behind the event in Acts chapter 2. And they listened to Peter preach about, about Jesus. The, the appointed God, the appointed Savior for, for mankind. And then Peter said, God said him to us, you killed him, but God raised him to life. Can you imagine? He was even accusing his audience that they are part of those who killed Jesus. But God raised him from the dead. They were made convicted and guilty. And so at the end of the preaching, they said, and the Bible says that they were pierced in their hearts. I want you to notice that. Because there are times when the preaching of the word of God comes to you and it pierces you in the heart. You became the target of God and God did not miss. You are pierced in the heart. Amen. You, you, will, you will not pray, Lord, miss me. When you shoot your word, don't, don't hit me, Lord. No, you, you should pray, Lord, hit me. Hallelujah. They were pierced in their heart. And the next question, when you have that feeling that you are pierced in your heart, the next question you should ask is, what should I do now, Lord? And sometimes the Lord uses the pastor to give an altar call to tell you or give a hand on what you should do. Because many times our mind is lazy. We don't, we don't improve in our meditation and insight. What should I do now, Lord? Because you heard that the word of God is alive, active, sharp, penetrating, discerning, exposing, and accounting, giving account of people. Therefore, your final question would be, what must I do, Lord? What should I do? And so Peter has the chance to say, repent for the forgiveness of your sins so that you will receive the Holy Spirit here, hallelujah, for the promises to you, to your children, and to your children's children, as many as the Lord of God shall know. Facing up means you take responsibility now for what God has been speaking to you. Don't push your wife to be the one to make decisions for you. Don't push your parents to be the one to make decisions for you. When God convicts you, He convicts you because He wants to deal with you. He wants to beautify your life. He wants to repair your life. Not the life of somebody else. It's you. God has targeted you and He did not miss you. You are piercing your heart. So face it up. And come to God and say, Yes, Lord. I've been trying to hide this, but now, Lord, you, you have exposed me and you have spoken to me. 
I want to say all this once and for all. Amen. You respond to the word of God, not just for 